This is Jonathan Ferguson, the Keeper of Firearms and Artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. On today's episode, he's going to be checking out the varied arsenal of Fallout 3. Fallout is a weird, always a weird mixture of serious and funny, and um, I think that weapon sums it up. <laughs> If there are any other games, guns, and mechanics that you guys want to see Jonathan break down, let us know in the comments section below. Make sure to subscribe for more videos like this one, and if you'd like to help out the Royal Armouries Museum and continue to support Jonathan's work, check out the links in the description of this video. Right, over to Jonathan. Right, so one of my, I'd say one of my favourite games, I haven't played it in many years, but um, put a lot of time in back in the day. And one of my favourite weapons to use was the Chinese pistol. It's one of the more real world firearms in the Fallout series, full stop. It's a very good approximation, given the limitations of the graphics, of the Shanxi Type 17. All of which is very sad because we haven't got one. We've got Chinese broom handles. One is a copy of the Star and the other is this Schnellfeuer copy. So that that's as close as we get to the Chinese pistol. Now, reason for pointing that out is that they have actually replicated the different magazine well shape of the Type 17, because it's a, a longer, wider magazine to, to cram in those 45 ACP cartridges. Reload animation, not accurate, even though the, the model is very accurate. The bolt should, in theory, lock open. There are some quirks of this 3D model, so there's no firing pin modelled or even um, textured on there in 2D, so it wouldn't technically work. And the other weird quirk is we've got rifle calibre cases flying out of this thing, even though we're putting pistol calibre rounds in it via the clip. Now the AK family we've covered many times on this series would have perhaps made narrative sense to just, for the Fallout series, for the Chinese faction, to stick with the AK. Why wouldn't they? Well I suppose the idea is that it was never invented in the first place and so the, the Russian rifle that was originally invented in the timeline was something different. However, it's pretty obviously an AK configured RPD. Perhaps for me more interesting than that, and something I'd forgotten about this game, is the, the fact that weapons degrade over time with use and they, they have stoppages. Uh, but I have, I have had to wrangle many a Chinese assault rifle jamming constantly in a way that doesn't really do justice to the legacy of uh, Kalashnikov or Degterev, to be honest with you. But uh, it's really nice to have in a game, especially in a, a survival type setting. It really gives you that idea of having to make do and mend, cobble stuff together, abandon that weapon entirely and switch to something else. So I think it really adds a lot to the game. This, um, if we th think about the, the sort of narrative of the, the Fallout universe, everything sort of 50s and that would have been made 50s and onwards is something a bit different. And this submachine gun, machine pistol, are much more removed from reality. I've seen people compare this submachine gun or machine pistol to the HK SMG prototype because it has a similar silhouette, maybe, but it is essentially a, a completely original design. Quick word on VATS, because we do see in this clip it used to its one of its best effects, which is to where you've got a, cha a high chance hit on a, on a particularly dangerous weapon or the arm that's holding that weapon. So we see him target that to take that weapon out of the fight to then switch fire to something else. That's a very good use of the system. I was always very lazy. I would go for high percentage hit on head, and if I couldn't, I'd go for the, go for the torso. Right, the, uh, well we need a Magnum revolver in any video game featuring firearms and we have the daddy of them in Fallout 3. It's a pretty good representation of the Smith & Wesson Model 29 of Dirty Harry fame. As I say, pretty well represented. There's a weird quirk, but I think applies to the whole game, where we see proper revolver bullets loaded in 
via speed loader into the cylinder, but then if you get a slow-mo fancy shot, the bullet you see fly through the air is a pointed boat tail rifle bullet. We've said this before about the Fallout series, but it is a sort of Mad Max meets Wild West, so you've, you've got to have a revolver. Some of them are going to be reminiscent of the Peacemaker, the, the single action army. Some of them are going to be more your classic mid-century, 20th century that is, uh, Magnum. So 44 Magnum revolvers. I'm not sure that quite fits with the timeline of where the Fallout universe diverges from ours, but this came in in 1955, so it's yeah, if, we, if we take that as the divergence point, none of this is strict. We, we can't compare the Fallout universe to ours, but clearly at some point it split off. So I guess this one just sneaks in under the wire as common to both universes. Right, so this is um, this is another pre-apocalypse gun that's in the game, specifically Lincoln's fancy repeater Winchester. It's nearly entirely Henry, and they've even bothered to render the, the loading system somewhat correctly. So the whole end of the outer barrel just pivots out of the way, and you load your rounds into the tube below the magazine base first. Couple of issues with the game version though, most obviously is the way the, the first person animation, or well, actually all the third person, just kind of waggles their fingers in the vague direction of the uh, magazine tube and all of your rounds just somehow go in. That's a convenience, or a fudge. The other one is a stylistic choice. So they've put a wooden handguard around the magazine tube near the action. But there's a reason why the Henry, the 1860 Henry, did not have a handguard. They didn't put one on there because it gets in the way of the loading system. So the bit we're missing here is the action of the spring-loaded follower that you need to position correctly before you open the end of the magazine tube. So that has to move through that wooden handguard. So the handguard can't be there for that to happen. Otherwise, it's not a bad attempt at a Henry with engraved receiver. The proportions are about right. It's got uh, an octagonal barrel. It does the job. It evokes the, the very prior era that it's supposed to. Well, first of all, I need to say I absolutely love the uh, the railway gun. Brilliant sort of comedy weapon. Fallout is a weird, always a m weird mixture of serious and, uh, and funny, and um, I think that weapon sums it up. Completely implausible, completely impractical. Who would make it? I'm not sure if the in-universe reason is that it is in fact a tool for planting rail railroad spikes into a railroad. That would make sense. I suspect that's the idea. As a weapon, it's just amusing. It's got the... Uh, the steam piston visible on the bottom of it. It's got the steam gauge. It produces steam and it makes the hilarious uh, train whistle sound every time you use it. It's, it's realistic insofar as the projectiles actually do look like railroad spikes <laughs> when they come out. It's, it's a slightly weird choice in that uh, Fallout, if anything, is more sort of atom punk, maybe a bit of diesel punk. It's not in any way a steampunk aesthetic, and yet this is the most steampunk weapon ever invented, arguably. <laughs> That is not how magazines work. This is a fundamental misunderstanding of what a magazine is. So this shotgun is basically a giant um, Papashar, PPSH, whatever, whatever you'd like to call it, Russian submachine gun, scaled up to 12 gauge, 12 ball shotgun cartridges. Okay, the issue with it is the drum magazine positioned so far forward. This could, could be made to work, but then it has a sort of an ejection port further back than that. No way for that to operate that's too small for a shotgun cartridge. There's no hole in the drum when it's taken off the weapon for a cartridge to even come out of or be fed into. So they've re recognized that the drum is in fact the feed device for the weapon. It's not just a decorative thing, but they haven't thought through in any way how it might work. The geometry doesn't work either. We've got a weird redundant gas system on there. This is a real mashup fantasy weapon.
The amusingly named Rocket Launcher, I made very little use of when I played this. Used it for fun, gave up. I'm not sure I found it super effective, and the different mass of the different bits of junk it shoots makes aiming a real pain. And damage is the same no matter what, whether you hit them with a garden gnome, amusingly, or a teddy bear, or a tin can, the damage is the same. So I wasn't a huge fan. Great idea, not really that effective for me. This, by request, is um, what I've grabbed to show you. Really to illustrate what is, what is actually a myth. Uh, this is a blunderbuss, obviously. This is one of about 1730-ish. But the reason we're here is that flared muzzle. And the myth, I suspect where the rocket launcher idea comes from, is we do have stories of people putting rocks, nails, random objects into these. Because, of course, you can, in theory, put anything into here with a powder charge behind it, prime your lock, and shoot it, and it will come out with potentially lethal force, depending on how you load it. But, was that ever done historically? There's just no evidence for it. In reality, if you could afford a blunderbuss and to keep it in good order, you could afford some lead shot, and that's what was used. The important point is, yes, you can load random stuff in a blunderbuss. No, nobody did it, as far as we know. Which leaves our poor rocket launcher pretty much out on its own as an improvised wood chipper based weapon from a parallel universe. The base rifle here is very clearly based on the HKG3. This version is particularly wacky. It's got a suppressor on it, it's got no buttstock, it's got a scope on it. So a scope suppressed rifle in a full power cartridge, well, let's say it's 5.56 then, in an intermediate cartridge even, is really an odd choice if you don't have a buttstock. <laughs> So the reason for no buttstock is something concealable where you're using it very close range. Now, there are other factors in play here probably in gameplay, but it, it's about as accurate as I, as I would expect it to be with a scope but no buttstock. Uh, the suppressor's probably a bit too good as well for a rifle caliber. It's kind of mechanical chuntering going on rather than gunfire, which I mean, still sound pretty much like gunfire. And it's not really fitting my theory of parallel universe divergence at, in the 40s or 50s because this really didn't come into service until, come into existence until the late 50s. But still, we, we can probably massage it to fit the timeline. But yeah, not a good variant. Right, going really left field here, and of course the Fallout universe does flirt with aliens, and we've got this rare sort of legendary level weapon that crops up in uh, a couple of the games. Don't know if this was the first one to feature it or not. It's classically 30s, 40s ray gun. Don't think it's based on any particular toy or film or anything like that. It's their own take on it. Can't help thinking about Mars attacks, although the guns in that work rather differently, and the pistol doesn't really look like this. Think of the classic Buck Rogers disintegrator pistol from the from the classic Foo Fighters album cover. That kind of thing. Super effective, as you might imagine, from alien technology. Uh, we've got a reload system with a, an energy tube thing in the side. Who cares how it works, really? Doesn't really fit in the universe, really, for me, but it's a fun one. And you get the disintegration aspect of it and the sort of it, it does fit in terms of the fiction of the 1940s and 50s which fallout takes heavily from and i guess that's how it fits but they've just taken the that leap of yeah aliens did crash in 1947 <laughs> We've seen the fat, the fat man in, in previous incarnation. We've got here the straightforward missile launcher, or frankly, you could just call it a rocket launcher. The typical differentiator of a missile versus a rocket is a missile is guided. This is not guided. It has some redundant switchology on the sides. I love analog switches and lights and things, but um, these I don't think do much. The real kind of, where, where this falls down, if we're trying to fit this into the real world, is that the thing breaks open like a shotgun, which is just not the way to make a missile or rocket launcher at all. Uh, because there's no reason to not load the missile or rocket from the front or from the back. 
Or, if you think of the small, munition is part of the entire rear receiver of the weapon, essentially, and you just fit that, fire it, dispose of it, so semi-disposable. Or you have a fully disposable system where you just fire and, just, and discard. This is none of those. This is, for some reason, we have to pivot it open in the middle in a really cumbersome way that wouldn't be practical. But it makes it visually different and interesting to watch, I suppose. Although I'm a veteran Fallout 3 player, I never played any DLC, so I have not seen the microwave emitter before. It's a lot of fun, it fits that uh, retro-futuristic, radiation-obsessed aesthetic very nicely. It's a terrible weapon though. It's not, not been designed as a weapon, I would I suggest. I don't know the backstory of, the, of this thing. But, um, you know, we see the, the in third-person view, the character's doing their best to sort of aim Jack Bauer style with something that has, not only has no sight, but blocks his view <laughs> when he tries to aim it. I like the, the sort of ray effects, the, the, the rings that emanate from it and how it has a, a battery instead of a magazine. More redundant switchology with the big dial that doesn't really do anything but it looks cool. I suppose the only thing I can contribute here really apart from reacting is for those of you who aren't aware there is in fact a microwave or, or millimeter wave weapon system called the active denial system but this used the closest thing we've seen to using uh, microwave or millimeter wave radiation to heat the target. So it, well, it was nicknamed, I think, the heat ray. Vehicle mounted though, and it didn't look anything like this, disappointingly. It's a shame how often sci-fi-esque weapons that are, that are implemented in the real world look nothing like their sci-fi counterparts. Okay, we've got a variant of the Fat Man that I don't think I ever used when I played the game. A sort of shotgun version. So lots of small warheads instead of one big miniature nuclear bomb, if that makes sense, because the original Fat Man munition was a scaled down airdrop nuclear bomb. Like the, the Fat Man that we've covered before, it is in fact a steam catapult or a gas catapult system. So the, in the original concept, it was like a steam catapult on an aircraft carrier for a miniature aircraft carrying a comedically oversized nuclear bomb. So it's interesting to see how it sort of drifted from that slightly ludicrous co uh, concept to something closer to that Davy Crockett recoilless weapon system that we know was actually tested. But this one is that MERV or uh, multiple independent re-entry vehicle, which is a, a real thing for nuclear missiles. So this is riffing on that but it is still firing miniature nuclear bombs, not nuclear missiles. I might have preferred, actually, in retrospect, if they'd gone for miniature Minuteman nuclear missiles or something like that out of a different launcher. But hey, um, it's still pretty cool and pretty devastating as well. You can also find me over on the Royal Armouries YouTube channel. We're welcoming visitors if you're in the UK. Please do come and visit us. And we have links in the description for ways that you can help us. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Thank you.